All right, we're back. Problem number two in our 10 problem quiz, chapter 14. Let's take a look. It says, Mrs. Smith operates a business in a competitive market. The current price is 850. Let's write that down. Price equals 850. All right. It then says what? At her profit maximizing level of production, the average variable cost is $8. So AVC equals $8. Lastly, it tells us, and the average total cost is $8.25 at this particular level of output. So we're going to put ATC, average total cost, is equal to $8.25. Now they're telling us this is the profit maximizing level of output. In other words, they're telling us this person can't do any better in terms of where they should produce in the world than this. So, what are they asking us? Mrs. Smith should do what? Well, let's take a look at it first. If the price is $8.50 and your average total costs are $8.25, then clearly you're making $5 per unit, right? Excuse me, 25 cents per unit. So that's not bad. You're making above normal returns and the amount is 25 cents per unit, all right? Next, we also know that our average variable cost is $8, but that's really not so relevant right here. So let's read what the answers are. It says, one, shut down our business in the short run, but continue to operate in the long run. Well, why would she shut down if the price was above her average variable cost? She wouldn't shut down. Continue to operate in the short run, shut down in the long run. Well, again, she's making money. It exceeds her average, her average total cost here. So she's making above normal returns. There's no incentive to shut down here. Operate in both the short run and the long run. And then last one, D, shut down in both short run and long run. Well, she's going to operate both in the short and the long run as best she can. Clearly, at this price, she's covering her cost and making money. So it makes no sense for her to basically leave this market at all. This is a very good situation. Now, I would argue in the long run, she's not going to sustain this difference between price and average total cost. Most likely what's going to happen is that her uh, average cost will rise, it'll equal price, and her profits will get squeezed. But until that time comes, she's doing quite fine. All right. So that's really number two, and that's pretty straightforward. So let's uh, jump to number three while we're here, all right? And this one's going to be a little more interesting, kind of along the same theme, but we're going to do it graphically this time, as opposed to a kind of just word question, so to speak. So it says figure 14.1. So I've got to draw a figure 14.1 for you, and let's do it together, because you should probably get in the habit of just doing this for yourself. It's this classic diagram, let me talk as I draw it here, in which these cost curves, we can analyze the position of a firm. We're going to put, always put little q to represent a firm there. And we'll put dollars on this vertical axis, all right? And we know that this is what it looks like. If the average total cost curve comes down and jumps up like this, so that's average total cost curve, I'm going to put the average variable cost curve in blue. Average variable cost curve in blue. And then we have a marginal cost. And just to keep the colors going, I'm going to put this in red. And marginal cost, you know, touches the bottoms there. And all of that came through is nice. All right. Now we have some quantities that are actually important to us. We're going to put $4.50 there. And we have a quantity up here, which is, should be about six fifty. All right. With that in mind, let's start the question. It says, if the market price falls below 450, if the market price falls below 450, that means this. That means price at, you're always going to set price equal to marginal cost. The firm is always going to try to go with P equals MC. But at that level of output, if price is below 450, let's say right here, at this level of output, your average variable cost are greater than your price. In other words, a, V, C is less than price. So what does that mean? This means, as we discussed in class, you can't even cover your variable cost. You can't cover your labor, your supplies, things you need immediately. This is not your long-term cost. These are, these are your fixed costs. These are your variable costs. In other words, a business person would say, I can't meet payroll. Right? That can't go on. This is, a, this is you're done. Right? If you can't meet, quote, payroll in the sense, meaning you can't cover your average variable cost, the price is, excuse me, the price is below, I should have it below this, below your average variable cost, then you are in 
big trouble, right? Every unit you sell, you can't even pay the labor to produce it. What are our choices here? About one, the firm, the firm will what? The firm will earn positive economic profits in the short run at 450? No way. We can't even cover our variable costs. So that one's out. B, negative economic profits in the short run, but remain in business. And here's the point here. This person can't even remain in business. You know, firms lose money. They lose money all the time, right? But it's a short run phenomenon. And banks are willing to finance them, give them loans to carry them through these bad times. Clearly, we're in some seriously bad times today. But if it's a long run situation, if the bank looks and says, this firm is simply not viable, if they can't cover their own variable costs, then they're not going to get any more loans. This firm is going to be really out of business. So the answer looks like seeing negative profits in the short run and shut down. And that's the answer. Again, when price is less than average variable cost, this firm has no future. They're not worth the risk of giving an additional loan because they can't even cover the cost of their basic supplies. They can't pay their suppliers for, let's say, lumber or, or materials that they need in the building trades or something. They can't pay their labor at the end of the week. There's no way this firm's going to survive. So the answer has to be C, they're going to shut down because, again, price has fallen below their average variable cost. Now, the next question is related to that, so let me continue with this. Number four, the firm will earn a negative economic profit but remain in business in the short run. So here's a situation that I was just kind of discussing. Is there a place where the firm is not making money but can stay in business in the short run? And the answer is yes. The answer is if price is greater than your average variable cost, but price is less than your average total cost. What's this say to us? It says, every time you sell something, your average total cost are exceed the price, so you're losing money. However, because your price is greater than your average variable cost, you can cover your labor, you can cover your materials. You know, you're gonna have trouble with rent, but that's a long-term contract, let's say. You're gonna have trouble with your insurance, but that may be a long-term contract. So a bank could lend you money perhaps in this situation because they say, look, it's a temporary situation. You're losing money temporarily. We expect this firm to recover. They can meet payroll. They can meet their supplier prices. I mean, their, their supplier's needs for basic goods. This firm is still viable as we perceive it. So graphically, if the price falls anywhere between 650 and 450, this area here, right? Again, price equals marginal cost. There's your output. At this level of output, we'll call it Q star, this firm, whatever this price is between 650 and 450, this firm will stay in business. It'll be losing money in the short run. The long run, this is not sustainable, but in the short run, it certainly is. So, this firm will earn a negative economic profit, remain in business in the short run if price is less than $6.30, but more than 450. So maybe the diagram has 630 there for you, and I drew 650. But the point is, it's in between these two points that the firm is going to make money. The answer here is C, all right? Uh, that's where the firm earns negative economic profits, but stays in business in the short run. So that's problems two, three, and four. Why don't we pause here for a minute? It'll get me a chance to come back to this figure, fix it up a little bit, and we'll do number five.